Pride. This is episode 12 of the Nerd Outlet Podcast. This is your boy, Luther. And Nathan. <laughs> and Greg. What <laughs> up, everybody? And what what's up, up nerds? How so, you guys doing? Oh, I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm tired, man. This week's been draining. Maybe because of the parties. Ah, uh, dude. Halloween, Halloween shenanigans. Halloween Fest 2016. Yeah, it's over. Yes. <laughs> I'm dead. Rest in peace. It was a crazy one. Yeah, you know, people people got fucked up. People like me don't remember falling asleep. People got on four wheelers and then crashed. Yeah. Pe- people we don't know. So people we don't know. <laughs> people people <laughs> around us. Um, but what we do know is they were trying to get their ass whooped by me and Beer Pong. But <laughs> I, th- I think they realized their friend was in a critical condition and they never came and got me. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they, they got Moral of the story, don't drink quick. drive. I mean, honestly. Whether it's a four-wheeler or a car anything. or uh, anything, don't get behind a motorized vehicle. Dude, especially like a four-wheeler or something that like you're not even really strapped into, though. Oh, yeah. He's a fucking dingus. Like, <laughs> like that's that's grade that's grade one level dingus right there. Dude. Like, it really is. Like, come on. Come on. Dude, it's like the dude that's like, I'm going to wait till the last second to throw this firework while I'm drunk as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a great idea. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was the last time we saw Jimmy's hand. <laughs> like, <laughs> or the, that fucking NFL dude. Is it an NFL dude? I think it was an NFL yeah, like Yeah, Plaxico Burris, who was in the nightclub. And oh, he that shot himself. I was talking about the dude. No, there's a football player that, like, uh, um... I think it was on Ju- in July. He lost mm. a, he lost a finger. Oh yeah, he was drunk. I think it was the same thing at the nightclub too. And no, he was he was fucking with fireworks with friends, and he was drunk. Oh, he was. Oh, okay. he's trying to throw fireworks. Exactly what I just told. He forgot Damn. the throw part. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they like blew the up in his yeah they blew up in his hand. He lost a finger, and like he almost like people were questioning if his career was over because he's like only a, I can't remember who it was, but he's a young like prospect. So I was like, mm. what a dumbass. What finger did he lose? Um, I can't remember. I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm not trying to tell anybody, you know, come jack my fingers. But I feel like I could, st- I could still play football if I lost a pinky or something. Pinky, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. He's fine. He's still playing in the NFL, from what I know. Hmm. Probably got a a prosthetic arm. Shout out to Big Arm boys. for one finger. <laughs> yeah, they, they told him to take they it off. Ni- they call him Nine Finger Joe. <laughs> don't fuck with Nine Finger Joe. <laughs> But anyway, listen, we got a good topic, don't we? Yeah, we're we're throw. I mean, it's not really a throwback, <laughs> but what we are doing is throwing it back to an old episode where we talked about music. So we're talking about music again. Was it? Hold Thank on. God. Was it Nerd Outlet podcast that we did the music, or was no, it the? Uh, that was off, when we did off base, off base for one episode and one episode only. Well, and yeah. well, <laughs> but it was one episode. But it was definitely the episode to where we were like, "Hey, we should totally just like not always talk about video games." Nope. And so we got to give some credit to, uh, to, uh, oh, that wasn't Chewy, me. Shut up. That wasn't me this time. <laughs> um, yeah, we got to give credit to, to Off Base, even though it was one episode. And I spent hours, not hours, a long time trying to get that fucking logo. And I was like, well, we're never using this again. Yeah, never. Never. Maybe one day. But we're talking about music. Good old music. Oh, yeah. Lots of, lots of good old music. Why don't you tell us, Luther, since you're the host, tell us about this. Music that we will be speaking recently of just today. discovered that <laughs> there's the year 2016 <laughs> is quite a fantastic year. No, yeah, there's so many albums I totally forgot that dropped. Like, how do you guys want to do this? We each say an album, then we come back again around say another album. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. that's, that's, that's good good that sounds good. That way First we don't album. have like one person having like a monologue. Well, let me before a little Hi, preface. Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before we thirty get minutes this, goes by. Yeah, before we get to this, let's just let's just say that music has been so much better than video games in 2016 as a whole. Like, there haven't been, at least for me, many disappointments. There hasn't been many uh, delays, from what I know. And it's not a piece of shit. So let's go. I don't know who wants to start. Oh, I'll start us off because I got one about the let you guys know totally forgot this came out this year because technically it's um an album of a whole bunch of throwaway tracks from kendrick lamar's fantastic album last year to pimp a butterfly oh man untitled unmastered oh 
Dude, dude. I forgot about that too. It's no. so good. No, it is. I almost crazy like good. it more than. Oh, I, oh, I like it more. Oh yeah, I will. You do flat out say I like it more just for the fact that like seven. I, I huh? What was it track seven? Oh no, yeah, because of track seven, and then Ooh. it's crazy too because it does the same thing that his other album did last year, where for some weird reason, I mean, it makes sense because they're all throwaway tracks from Pimp Butterfly, but all the tracks like flow together, and it's it yeah. literally is just like yeah. another album. Yeah, it really is. Um. But yeah, but like we said, track seven is like oh, I was like I was like six tracks and I was like, man, this is pretty good. And then like this is this is after so yeah, this is after you told me seven was good. So by the time I got yeah. to seven, I was like, all right, let's see what if Luther was right. And then, like I got like three minutes and I was like, fuck yes, dude, this <laughs> track is fire. Uh, probably my favorite track from Kendrick. Oh, like ever. And you know what's the thing that gets me so mad about Untitled? And I mean, it doesn't get me mad because it's kind of cool in a way, but it just sucks that have to just call it track seven because it doesn't have a real name yeah i like that though no yeah i'm not saying it's cool but it's just like untitled seven or something it's like yeah. it's like all, all those leaked brand new demos where for it was so like long, untitled they were literally just untitled numbers yep oh, until wow. they like, i loved it re-released them this year and then gave them names no and they sound so much better now now than that they're like they've cleaned them up and all that type of stuff yeah um man that's a good record should we get <laughs> damn if we're gonna consider that like a release i might have to put that on there did that oh, come out this demos? year? Ah, what do you consider that? I mean, it was I mean, technically real released. They're real old. Yeah, yeah. well, we, I, won't add it. I won't talk about it. But, but I mean, was did, he, did they Shout compile out it into a brand new though? Yeah, they compiled it. It was called like cassette tape or something like that. Oh, I can't they're remember just, what it's called. They're demos. They're old, oh, okay. they're old demos. So like uh, between uh, between Deja and uh, Devil and God, they were recording what was going to be Devil and God. And um, how was it like six, seven tracks got leaked? It was gonna. It was like six, seven tracks that were actually going to be on the album, and and they scrapped them completely because they got leaked, and they rewrote it, and then Devil and God ended up being, like they rewrote like completely new songs, and those new songs, which ended up being Devil and God, ended up being one of my favorite albums of all time. I think there's some d- great tracks in the um in those leaked ones. Yeah, but, but I think there's a. I sense... think it's a good thing that they're like B sides essentially now. Yep, cause... even though the, they weren't supposed to be. Um. Yeah, it ended up being a blessing in disguise. I think for uh, brand new because I think they found a whole new identity with uh, with it. Definitely. Um, I knew they were definitely depressed about it, and I think that really does show on the um, actual songs. There's a couple songs that leaked like sewing season. Yeah, that uh, ended up still being on the record. Um, of course, that's the opening track, and that's actually uh, Devin's favorite track by Brand New of all time. So, question, because I thought of this on the fly. Um. Because uh, Q's talked to me about it before, and I want to know what you guys think about it. Because I know, see, I like music, but I don't know as much music as you and Greg do. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't say that. You just don't really know more. You're more on the hip hop side. No, than yeah, me and, me and him. But um, Q was Q was telling me the other day, cause, like, hey, cause Q's trying to become a producer one day. Yeah, and he was telling me, dude, he was like, dude, don't you find it funny that somebody like an indie artist, like let's say when um, Chance, because we were talking about him earlier, when he released his independent album, mm-hmm. Acid Rap, he's like, isn't it crazy that when an indie artist releases an album, it never leaks? But as soon as that same indie artist gets signed to a label, and then the label, uh, they're like, they're about to drop another album, the album somehow always leaks. And Q was like, I straight up think it's just like the, the record label leaking the album out on purpose. It could be that, or it could yeah, just be like, ha- think of how many hands yeah, are going to be touching to that say. record. It just goes through so many hands that you can't trust everybody to not. True. There's a True. lot of there's a lot of um, indie artists. If you're talking indie indie, yeah. um, that like, it'll take longer for you to get the physical copy of that record, like past past release, um, because they try to distribute it through like all digital channels. So I think that's, oh, that's okay. why Views didn't get leaked. Because like he had a couple weeks before, um, I think he did that with. If you're reading this, it's too late as well. No, yeah, but if um, I don't, I, I think. But like that was an iTunes exclusive. No, yeah, it was I was an Apple say exclusive. Use... Call it and because of that. I think that's because it was only through digital, and like, yeah. it was him, the record company, like probably the higher ups in the uh, record company, and Apple. They're the only ones that had it. That's it. But I think anybody who signed like an exclusive deal with Apple Music, none of their stuff is leaked, right? That's what I'm saying. Like. Because it's no, going, yeah. it's it's not like it's not physically going through so many hands. Okay. I true. mean, like, think about it. If you get a record that like, 
I mean, it's just like it's literally like if um, when we worked at GameStop and um, we got a game in like five days before it released. Oh yeah. And what if we decided to steal one of those copies and be like, "Hey, look, like, like how the dude got a, a leaked copy of No Man's Sky before it came out because it went through so many hands." Yeah. That's what, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like that with music, like, but they're not as strict as it on it on like video games and stuff like that because yeah. they can track you down a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're playing a video game online, if you're a dumbass. Man, um, you got to go offline for that shit. Yeah. So, um, because of that, and it's so easy to just steal a copy and leak it on the internet. I mean, it's literally just putting it in there, burning it to your um, to your uh, not burning it, uh, transferring it to your um, computer, and then just uploading that. That's all it is. So, I mean, like, you know, some distributors get an album five, six, seven days before release, you know, to make sure they got stock and stuff like that. And that's why. That's why. No, I mean, dude, it I honestly makes sense. So, it's it, it's more physical. You, I, I bet you 20 bucks when the medium, I don't know, now will be almost faces out all um, all physical media like that. Um, and they do it more. Well, I think there's, there's going to be independent rise of, like, I don't know, like Bandcamp and stuff like that. Not not Bandcamp, but things like that. Distribution services that are more for the um, for the artist. Yeah. Um, you're gonna start seeing a lot less albums leak because of that. Do you guys think uh, when that day comes when uh it's fully digital? I know for sure they'll still sell records. You guys think they're gonna sell CDs though? Um, I th- I could see a couple years to where CDs really I don't don't exist and then they no, become yeah. like a collector's item kind of thing like how vinyl is now i mean yeah cds are definitely gonna go out before vinyl does yeah for sure vinyl's gonna stay forever no that's what i feel like whether it's whether it's almost nothing or you know whether it it diminishes to what it is now or it just keeps rising Mm because i mean still vinyl just keeps going up it's a small incremental rise but it's the only form of um physical uh music media that is actually um on their eyes right now yeah and it's a collector's thing. And uh, I really do think if CDs get phased out, uh, vinyl will start becoming uh, more relevant. And if it becomes more relevant, that means more people are going to be making actual records, and that means prices might start going down for because of competition and then just the ease of uh, having... You, you're able to ship so many things at such a quicker pace. That's why records are so expensive right now, because it takes so long, because there's only so many places you can get them pressed. Yeah, they're all delayed. Yep. <laughs> really, that's what it is. Yeah, like they're sucks. delayed because there's not enough. There's not enough places right now for the demand of uh, records. So, but anyway. Crazy. But no, yeah. Uh, let us know what <laughs> what's your first album is that you want to shout out this week. Mine here. Oh, right, Greg, you can go first. All right. Well, I'm I'm just gonna start at the top here. My uh, favorite okay. album of the year. Go ahead. From my favorite band of all time. Okay. 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 Limb Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was like, fuck, <laughs> I need to like think of something horrible before he says anything. Are they back this year? No. No, I hope not. Uh, uh, Thrice returned this year. Great album. With a brand new record called To Be Everywhere Is To Be Nowhere. And it's one of the best albums of their discography. Damn. One of the best? Would you consider it, would you consider it its best or no? It's not the best in my opinion. What's but your it's favorite? like one of their best. VC is my favorite. I was about to say the one you have, right? Um. But it's right like there. it's like top three, top top five for sure. And that's your favorite band, so it's pretty damn good. Yeah. Why do you like it so much? Why do you, why do you think it surpasses most thrice records I and mean, then everything that's come out this year? For the year, well? like it's just like a solid rock record. It's the best rock record I've heard this year so far. It's tight. Um, yeah, it's if just there's a, one word I can describe. I mean, it, it's very tight. The thing with thrice is their musicianship is just insane. Um, all four members of the band are just incredible musicians, and when they get together, they just create something that transcends other rock bands. Like I don't yep. know, just it's like having four creative geniuses in a room. Yep, writing a record. So, um, just every song, they they uh, what Thrice does well is they have a dynamic where they'll have like really loud, heavy, bombastic songs, and then really quiet more emotional more personal songs and they'll just fluctuate between all these things and different emotions um cool thing about this record that's different from all their other ones is lyrically uh dustin kenster the main singer lead singer Mm -hmm. of the band he kind of went to 
a more political angle on his lyrics, which is not how he has, you know, personally tackled or previously tackled lyrics. So um, that's kind of cool on songs like uh, "Blood and Sand." It's definitely more of a, a like a anti-war kind of yep. song, and um, I just think it's cool. And then he, they also wrote a song that's just like a love song, straight up. Like it's just a sweet uh innocent kind of love song and that's different for the band too but it all works together and it all comes together in like a really cohesive nice flowing album so i understand this but is I just mean, an album though not a concept album right yeah yeah talking about uh, but i mean unbiasedly like i think anybody who listens to rock music should check it out yeah um but for me like nothing can top it it's just yeah it's thrice and it's thrice at their best so I'll give you that. It's definitely one of my favorites because I'm not the biggest like Thrice fan. I yeah. I I respect them it so seemed, much. It seems like, like this is a record that a lot of people that never really got into Thrice can appreciate. Yep. Like I've seen a lot of people that have been like, yeah, I never really liked Thrice, but that, this record's pretty cool. Yep. I think it's because it's a little heavier. Yeah, maybe. Um, or at least when it is heavy, like I think it it just strikes the right mood. Mm-hmm. Talking about a a band that try to make a political statement with a song that usually doesn't um i want to bring up my first is devil wears prada's uh, new album transit blues mm. um they made they, they had the space ep last year and it was really good and it was a con it was a concept uh ep it was really cool um i don't know man like i think it was really good but i was like man i feel like devil wears prada's kind of losing it mm-hmm. and i'm very scared and then they released their new single for transit blues which was daughter um and they were very quiet for months like months, they I think they released it like three months before the album came out. Mm-hmm. Didn't say a thing until like two weeks later or two weeks before the release, and released another single. And at that point, I was like, "All right, this album is going to be good." Um, but I was just very hesitant on this album, and it actually ended up being one of my favorite albums um, by Devil Wears Prada. Which, if you ever knew me in high school, you know that I was considered the Devil Wears Prada kid. Um, <laughs> I love them so much. Um, they are still. Like, probably top five bands of all time. Mm-hmm. Fun fact about Nathan, he was a train stamp of Devil Wears Prada. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know how it is. No, but they had a, they had a really he good song. A, he has a tattoo that just says Sassafras. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, dude, that song's so good, though. That song's so good. I might I might get that. <laughs> no, but they have a, they have a song on the, the new album called Lock and Load, and it's a political statement about uh, gun control. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, that's... Not what I was anticipating from Devil. Yeah, very different for, um, for that band too. Yeah, and then if you were a big fan of uh, 818, which is their um, last album, um, came out in 2013, I believe. Mm-hmm. They had a song called Home of for Grave, and it was a concept song. Uh, and it was about this guy, um, about this guy that was like, I don't know the meaning of my life, and then he just dies in a car wreck. And you're like, okay, what the fuck? <laughs> um, and then Mike Kranica, uh, the next year, I don't know, it might have been that year. But uh, a little bit after the album came out, he actually released a short story called Home for Grave based on that same story. And then um, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's it's a, it's small. Like, you can read it in, like, 20 minutes. But, I mean, it's definitely something that, like, it stays with you because of how it ends. You're like, oh, shit. Um, but uh, they actually released a part two version. Uh, and it was based on um, – it was in the point of view of his uh, girlfriend at the time. Um, and it's – it, it – it's very emotional. Anyway, listen to the record Transit Blues. It's really, really good. Um, but that's my first. That's my first album. So who set it off, Luther? Oh, hit us with another one. Another one that I th- another yeah. album I thoroughly enjoyed this year. Giving a shout out to the homies from Flatbush. Mm. Three thousand and one, A Laced mm. Odyssey. It's a good album. Yeah, really good songs. I haven't listened to that in a lot. No, yeah, I I haven't listened to it in a while because I randomly <clears throat> turned like put on like a song from it. Oh at yeah, the party. Yeah, and really? Luther was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I can't tell you how many he was times. He's the only one who knew who it was. <laughs> how many times we just sit there, fucked. I mean, obviously, watching. He introduced to me to them, so they're good, dude. They're really good, but they're really good when you're not sober. <laughs> Bro, I just, like that's what they talk about too. That's a whole every single. That's literally what every single song is about. Mm-hmm. I just need. I need to see them again whenever they decide that they want to come back to America and they're done. Let me know. Yeah. around in Europe. <laughs> Let me know when they uh ended up end up coming back because I might want to go see them. Dude, the thing that gets me mad though. I mean, be- I'm sorry that I'm stalling everything. Is that I saw them right, and and the one dude of the group who I fucking love, Michi, Q swears that he ran through the crowd 
passed right by us and then ran right back up on stage. And I didn't even see. I, I was I was focused on stage and I didn't even notice he had jumped off stage, got into the crowd and then went back up. <laughs> huh. That sucks. No, it it, really, it sucks. really sucks cuz he was like Q, like after we left, Q was Q, I was talking about like, oh yeah, this was cool. I saw this cool. And then Q was like, bro, why didn't you say like it was cool when Michi passed us? And I was like, bro, I don't even remember that. And he was like, no, yeah, that happened, which sucks. But uh, eh. that that's the one you'll, I wanna... you'll live and you learn. No, yeah. Um, how? Why do you like? Why do you like the album so much? Why do I like the album so much? Um, uh, cause for their first album, I think they did a really good job from like setting a tone from the beginning even though that tone is honestly just about getting fucked up but they started off with their with a little intro of them like shooting off into space and then they all rap and then they end it with this is it and then they throw one more one more song in there which is i want to say is like honestly like a bonus song and uh it's called this is your favorite rap song and dude they spit bars on there so when your favorite rap albums uh, three thousand. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, dude. because it, dude, it, it honestly, like, cause I remember I was chilling in my house, and then my f- a notification popped on my phone, and it was like Flatbush just dropped a, a um an album, and I was like, wait, when when did this happen? <laughs> and from there on, Today. no, yeah, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that's why I'm giving you the notification. <laughs> 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 Start questioning the Your notification, dude. Talks to you. You're yeah. fucking idiot. You fucking idiot. I, I did. Out. When? Today, you dumbass. <laughs> Listen to it now. <laughs> dude, and I did. I took my phone's advice so quickly. <laughs> That's good to hear. How about you, how about you Greg? What's your, what's your next one? All right. So, well, my second favorite band also released an album this year. So, it's a good fucking year for me. <laughs> but uh, Jimmy Eat World released a, uh, in my opinion, comeback record for the band um, called Integrity Blues. All these blues records. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, yeah. Transit Blues. I mean, like, yeah. Step Wars Prada's album, Transit Blues, is about Transit Blues. It's mm-hmm. about going out on tour and, how, like, what that does to you. Right. right, right. Um, that's what most of the record's about. It's really yeah. cool. So this one's called Integrity Blues. Um, and it kind of takes, like, a little bit from older uh, Jimmy World records and sounds. Um, a lot of people compare it to futures which like a lot of people consider their best record that's their best record i'm sorry i, I mean you disagree <laughs> i i'm like tied with that in bleed american but bleed american is really good <clears throat> but i think through and through futures futures is pain right yeah that's my favorite jimmy e. world song yeah my favorite song of all times on that record but um on futures yeah it's 23 23 yeah. i have to re-listen to it i don't really know him by it's name it's the closing track okay um, but this record is for sure like jimmy world back at the top of their game like Every single song is awesome. Um, what was their last record? Their last record was Damage, and had the umbrella on it, and it was all right. It had like a few it. good songs, but like overall, just it okay. wasn't up to par. Like it wasn't up to the standards of the band. Um, but at this point, the band's getting like really old. <laughs> yeah, they've been around for a while, but this record like just shows that they still have they're, they're still around and yep. can still be like the best alternative rock band out there right now. Um, the album kind of uh, with a lot of songs takes a like slower darker uh like sadder approach Mm -hmm. on some things um but does it well yeah it does it well Um, it kind of reminds me of chase this light which was like a a record they put out but kind of like was different from their discography Mm -hmm. but that was like an upbeat record this is more of a downbeat record i think that's what i think that's what jimmy Eaton wells does best i mean like they're definitely known for like you know um some of their biggest songs are more upbeat. Yeah, like um, the middle that you hear I literally know, in public. Literally, yeah. If you I didn't go want shopping to bring it at up, a grocery like, store, you'll hear that song. Yeah. Shout um, out to the middle. A hundred percent of that on Guitar Hero. <laughs> hey. hey, it's a good song. It's a good song, but it's definitely, um, it's definitely, you know, I don't think that's Jimmy Eat at its best. Right. I think they, I think they do the melancholy better than anything. Mm-hmm. So if this is it downbeat, I need to give it a listen. No, I yeah, do remember you bringing it up. Fantastic but record. So much, so many albums are coming out this year that I just forget sometimes, man. Um, but yeah, my my next album is um, <clears throat> is uh, Black Mountains, um, four. Yes. Uh, Roman numeral one four. Uh, they had um, 
Yeah, it's an alternative band. They're kind of a little sludgy. They're really weird because they're very experimental. Yeah, they're like an experimental <laughs> psychedelic yep. metal, but not metal rock. Yep, but they're not hard. Rock, yeah, like but more blues. hard rock. Like, yep. I don't know how to describe One song will sound like Black Sabbath, or yeah. the same song will sound like Black Sabbath in like a couple minute, for a couple minutes. The next part will sound like something like like Led Zeppelin to like early Pink Floyd. And you're yeah, like, I was what about the fuck? Pink Floyd and then like songs like god what is that i always get this this uh florian saucer attack um that song literally sounds like tame impala mm-hmm. um but they're they're uh they're the first track on the album mother's the sun is definitely one of my favorite like alternative slash rock whatever like rock songs of all time like ever it's amazing um i can't remember exactly what it was but it was on a commercial for uh some video game that's come out in the past couple months no really I can't remember what it was. What's I have to go look called? it up. That's awesome. Uh, Mothers of the Sun by Black Mountain. Oh, okay. Um, but it's a fantastic record. You'd um, think that would fit in Mafia. Like a Mafia maybe? trailer, but I don't know we'll if it We'll have to was. look it up afterwards. Sure. Um, but yeah, it definitely, it definitely uh, through and through, really good songs. I think there's like one song that's just like okay to me, but uh, I think there's nine. It's like eight tracks, nine tracks. But they're yeah, they have no, longer tracks. longer songs. So. Yeah, they got they got some really long songs in there, and those are usually the like Mother's of the Sun is one of them. Um, I think that's what they flourish. I'd love them to just do like like a Pink Floyd Pink Floyd esque album. Where it's like hey, it's five songs, but the first one and the last one are fifteen minutes. One's nine minutes. One's a four minute song, like Wish You Were Here did or um, <clears throat> or Animals. Mm-hmm. by uh, Pink Floyd both of those albums were only five tracks but they were like 50 minutes long so I'd love them to do a little something like really experimental that way I like those long songs but it's a really good album and if you're definitely a fan of like any type of rock you need to listen to it mm-hmm. so. what's your next one my next Lisa. one how, also how many do you guys have uh I, I mean I'm down to do five five's good okay. yeah okay just want to make sure uh but this one is a double and I feel like I have to do it as a double because they were released back to back. But shout out to the homie Frank Ocean for Blonde and Endless. Oh yeah, that that was amazing. I did not expect. I mean, I know Frank Ocean. The man puts out two records. No, yeah. <laughs> like One's I very experimental though. Right. Like, no, yeah. But it still sounds pretty. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I listen to a little bit of Blonde. It's not my thing. Just personally, it's just see, not my thing. I can see why people love. No, it. yeah. Um, I prefer Endless, honestly. Yeah, from what I've heard, I skimmed through it because it was just, it's like one track. Yeah. <clears throat> or at least the way I found it, it's one track. So I was just like, I was skimming through it to see if I liked it. I was like, this is a lot better, in my personal opinion, than um, than um, Blonde. Um, but isn't Endless, isn't it, isn't Endless the one he wanted to make and then he had to make Blonde for the record label? Maybe. I mean, like, you can definitely, I if that's correct... Then it shows. Oh, okay. It definitely shows, in my opinion. Yeah. That like, there's more soul. There's more. I, yeah. I don't that's know, interesting. Man. People kind of say the opposite. <clears throat> they say that Endless was like was one released on Apple Music just to promote the record that was coming out, which ended up being Blonde on yeah. Apple. Music. Maybe like, I don't know. I, don't know. I have no idea because I'm, I'm not a I'm not a Frank like, Ocean. Yeah. Ocean at the time. Oh okay. But I mean, I honestly don't know. People said it was the. Um, Endless is the experimental one, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah people, people were saying that one was really cool. And then um, and then people like Q. Well, that's and, what they heard first. So, yeah. Yeah. But people were like, dude, this is weird. I like it. It's different. Um, it might not be your thing because it's so weird, but most people were actually liking it. And then Blonde is like, oh, this is a really good like Frank Ocean record. Yeah. You know what I mean? Does yeah. that make sense? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm – Say I'm saying this from like the outside, not the in, like not coming from the inside because I'm not a Frank Ocean fan. He's like, giving you guys the voice of the people. Yeah, <laughs> from what like Q and it's Frank Ocean you and yeah, uh, a couple of my friends from Georgia State have been saying so. Mm-hmm. But this is I I, I need to give Blonde, Blonde another chance. Like Nike was, what a horrid song to begin with yeah no, i'm no. sorry that's like, the worst ro- song on the record in my opinion what yeah it's like atrocious you? like i hate that song i really do and i don't hate it i think it's all right but oh like, it's the I, worst everybody's song like the dude this album's so dope and i turn on nike and i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> so i skipped it like halfway through and i was like god i can't fucking li- finish this song this is awful <laughs> and it got better it definitely got better but it, yeah it was it's odd 
But that might be it. Might be one of those things that like I watched Step Brothers. The first, the first time I watched Step Brothers, I was I hated it. And then like I watched it again, I was like, I guess I was just in a mood. I guess I guess I was just in a shitty mood, and <clears throat> that wasn't quote unquote funny at the at the time. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe I'll like it the next time. Why do you Why do you like this one, especially compared to what? Uh, wait, what? Which one? Endless and Blonde or Blonde? You... Endless, like I I kind of get why you like it. Yeah. Why do you like Blonde, especially oh. compared to like like Orange and was it Channel Orange? Oh yeah, Channel, Channel Orange. Orange. Why yeah. do I Why do I like Blonde? <laughs> it's kind of shitty to say, but I like Blonde so much because I was so down on Party Next Door's album. And then I heard Blonde, and I was like, "Dude, this is what Party should have did." I mean, honestly, I remember when you're. Yeah, you're like, that's not sucks. a wrong answer though. It's like when Frank Ocean puts out an album, he basically just shows like, yeah, everybody currently in R and B, in like hip hop, in like mainstream hip hop, like radio R and B, like all that kind of thing, just uh-huh. shows them how to properly write a song. Yeah, and honestly. like put out an album. Yeah. I feel like, like that's I mean, the weekend. Besides, like Beyonce and like the weekend, like yeah. like I really think weekend song structures and the way he uses instruments, like you don't see that with bands. No, I agree. Or artists really that much anymore. Um, I'm not a big Beyonce fan, but I'll definitely give credit where the credit's due. The thing like about Frank Ocean is like his voice is gorgeous, but then at the same time, when he wants to, he can just drop bars. Honestly, and it's he weird. He really can. Like I'll give you that. Uh, the weekend is decent at dropping bars, but he's not the best. He's definitely more on the R and B side. So, um, but I mean, dude, he weekend doesn't even need to, cause like he'll say like a line, and then and like then, girls are just wet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, like dude, Devin, like, we'll be sitting there chilling, and I'm like, I really think you'd leave me if he was right here and was like, let's fuck, <laughs> <laughs> like, and she and she just looks at me and goes, mm. <laughs> I'm just like, oh well, I'm glad, uh. I'm glad that I, I hopefully that hopefully we never have to get in that situation. Don't that go sucks. to Toronto. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> um, no, but his, t- his pre-sales came out today, and it's like 150 bucks to go see him. A ticket, pass for Damn. like a decent seat, for a decent seat. Yeah, we can but, go hey, see- dude, at least it's justified though, because when Drake <laughs> was coming out with the 150 dollar oh. tickets, I was like, fuck that, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. Would you say would you say weekend for 150 bucks is more justified than Drake oh, for 150? Yes, for sure. And I and I saw videos from the Drake show, and, and wasn't I was like, that like. Great. It what dude, it wasn't that great. And one he was crazy is from the videos I saw leading up to Drake, I felt like the crowd was more live than when Drake was up there. Like when they put on um I don't know if you guys have heard it, but it's by his name his name is Roy Woods and it's called Drama. Uh-huh. When they put on that song, dude, I saw the whole crowd like dancing to it and I was like, shit, dude, I wish I was there for that. But it's honestly seeing Drake at $150 is Honestly, the same reason why I've never seen a rap artist I, or even anything rap show related other than Flatbush Zombies is because once a rapper becomes so big and you had to it's see them. It's ridiculously in, expensive. No, it's ridiculously expensive. And then you had to see them in an auditorium. And I just feel like it's weird. I mean, not an auditorium, but like a huge stadium. Yeah, and it's an just, arena. Yeah. And it's just weird seeing like a rap artist when it's just one person up there who's honestly like doing at the end of the day, like spoken word. But That's you know. why I love The weekend, dude. No, I agree. Devin's no, yeah. Like, Devin's That's why I've never gone to, like, yeah. a rap show either. That's why, like, The weekend was the only one I've gone to. Because, like, he's a performer. No, yeah. And he has a band. And a real, like, a real band that's playing the whole concert. Oh, dude, that's so it's amazing. it's not just him. And, like, such a, it's such a visual experience, too. And I bet you Drake's was, too, from what I saw. Like, no, yeah, like, you're all always going to have some dope-ass light show because, you yeah. know, you spend 150 bucks. That's really what you, you're paying a lot for the production value of, uh, of the actual uh, show itself. But, uh. No, the weekend was amazing because like Devin is a vocal major, and I mean I brought this up so many times, but she's like I don't, I didn't hear once, like not once did he fuck up, like vocally. That's insane. And he played for like ever, man. He played for like a long time. And, and then it's um, crazy too is that like he didn't fuck up, and. I mean, you could tell from, like, his songs, like, the amount of drugs this guy does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, how does his voice not, like, fuck up? Yeah. And then, he, dude, he's, like, screaming in that mic, too. Yeah. Like, and he's 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 dancing the whole time. Like, can't feel my face. Like, it's a very, like, very vocal, heavy song. Um, Side note, though. I'm, I mean, you, I know, Nathan, you saw it because you watched the video. But uh, <laughs> are you guys disappointed that... uh. We can cut off his quote unquote musty palm tree haircut. Oh, I'm so fucking happy. <laughs> Devin was like, No, but that's the weekend. No, that's the weekend. And then he drops uh, Starboy. And like, she was like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, she saw the album cover and she's like, 
it looks good. And then she, <laughs> then the music video dropped. And then like immediately I, after we watched the video, I was like, what do you think? She's like, oh, he's so much hotter. <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, I told you. Like, he's such a good looking guy. I'm like, but that hair's fucking hideous. Yeah. Like, the it just is. Tree. The musty palm tree. musty yeah. palm tree. It really does, dude. <laughs> it looks like, it looks like, uh, <laughs> it looks like a palm tree on, at the beach, like after a horrible oil spill. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. Damn. Shout out to them oil spills right now in like <laughs> Alabama right now. I don't know if you guys heard yeah. about that. No, yeah, pipeline they're gonna broke. fuck us on gas for yep. a little bit. Gonna love that. But uh, how about how about you? Uh, hold yeah, on. Greg, you're on your third now. Third. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, a record that was for a video game that turned out to be not so good, but the, oh, music, the music on the itself. other hand hmm. is one of the best albums of the year oh, in Doom? my opinion. The Doom, Doom soundtrack is Doom quite sound. good, yeah, yeah, but that yeah. game is also awesome. I know. I was just saying like, the actual <laughs> but, uh, record um, soundtrack is I'm actually referring to uh, the No Man's Sky soundtrack, also known as 65 Days of Static album, No Man's Sky. <laughs> it's basically like just their next record that they happen to you know make the soundtrack for the game. Yep. Okay. So they were writing a soundtrack for the game, but at the same time, they're just writing their next record because um, Sean Murray just gave them no direction. He was just like, this is what the game's about. This is what it's kind of going to be like. And they just went and wrote it. But um, Also, preface, they are a instrumental rock band, correct? They are a post-rock band, yeah. Completely instrumental. Um, Reminds me of uh, the post- or the um, big thing you got right here on your wall, Moving Mountains. Yeah. They're Another more, amazing. Yeah. They use uh, like lyrics and vocals and stuff. but Do they? Yeah. Do they now? Yeah, yeah. They always have. Have they? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of another band. Oh, okay. But they had oh, like, like really. Caspian? Are you thinking of Caspian? <sighs> Dude, I can't remember. I just Caspian's know. I just know normal. that Moving Mountains is very uh, jammy, or at least they used to be. I mm-hmm. haven't really listened to their new stuff. But go on. But the sixty-five days of static record. Woo! It's good. You definitely showed me. You showed me the your favorite tracks mm-hmm. one time. Really, really good. Yeah. Definitely something like to do homework. Sit there to do like something. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, post rock's not like for everybody. A lot of people say it all sounds the same, but um. I mean, I think this record, it's like it has life. the feel of the the game and what like the game was trying to give people like a sense of adventure exploration. Yep. Um, like just you know discovering things from like deep dark caverns to just the grand like epicness of space, and it it like invokes all of that through the through the music. So and only the music, not the <laughs> game. <Yeah. laughs> Say what you will about the game, but uh, <laughs> no, I think this album is definitely one of their best, um, and definitely one of the p- best post rock records of the year for sure. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I liked it from what from what I heard. So, what's your next one? My next one is um, the nineteen seventy five. Mm. So I like their first album. But there's yes. an issue with it. I had is ev- every single song kind of sounds the same. Mm. Um. The guitar work is very much was very similar throughout it. The synths, that's, a, that's almost every single song on the, their self titled. Um, but they told dude, but they totally did a one eighty. Like they were a really good band, but I was like, are they just like a one hit like wonder kind of like? I'm not you know what I mean, but like they just have this one sound and can they can they not escape it? And they're like, well, hey guys, we can make more sounds and we're gonna make a lot of them and they're all fucking good. Now the album is called. I like it when you sleep. For you, for yeah, are for you so are so beautiful, beautiful yet so unaware. unaware. Uh, long ass title. I had to look it up before we got here. Uh, had to keep typing, then go back to it. Type, go back to it to make sure I, <laughs> I said I, I, I got it correct. Um, the album itself, man. I don't know if you, have you listened to it. Yep. Whoo! Very on, good. Let me let me pull it up because there's like 20 songs on there, and I'm gonna sit there and forget what they are all called. for me there's there's a couple misses like here and there i can't tell you off the, the line, last like, what they two are, songs but... i'm not big on yeah that's about it like i really think the all the biggest if i had one caveat with the with the album it is how it finishes mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't end on a strong note it very it's very weird because it's like acoustic i think one of them is acoustic song and one's just a really slow song and i'm like it doesn't really like i feel like this shouldn't even be on the album mm-hmm. um but uh, somebody else, a change of heart, love me. Uh, she's American. That's probably my favorite on the album. Yep. Um, what is it? If I believe you is amazing. I mean, like, dude, just anything. Loving someone, the sound. 
all great. It's really just the whole album is great except the last two songs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what the band does really well is just that like indie pop, yep. Brit indie pop sound. And then what this record did, I think that was cool, was have more of an 80s pop influence on yes. it. Yes. Uh, and... One of the songs, could you could literally just say, if you listen to the first seconds, 10 seconds, you go, who is this? You'd probably say In Excess. Mm-hmm. It literally sounds like an In Excess song. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one sounds like Depeche Mode. Yep. Another one sounds like The Cure. I mean, like, it is really, if you know me, those are bands that I'm like, In Excess, not as much, but Depeche Mode and The Cure. Like, if you know me, like, you know, you've heard of those two, at least. Um, and you show, you, this album shows their influences, but it doesn't, it doesn't wear it. Like just it doesn't just like wear it all the time. Like let's say I said like the first ten seconds of that song, I can't remember what it is. It sounds like an excess. You're like, man, this is really an excess. But then they kind of do their own thing with it by the end of the song. Yep. So fantastic record. Insanely catchy. Oh yes, those songs get stuck in your head. Holy shit, dude! That's the main reason why I kept replaying that album is solely because I was like, man, I just need to listen to that song right now because I can't get it out of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, beware. Beware in that aspect. Like, <laughs> if you're definitely someone who gets like hooked on an album, especially like a catchy one like this, it's gonna stay there for a while. So, how about you, Lisa? What's your next? My next album is is one that I didn't even expect to be honestly that great, and it's kind of fucked up to say, but because I didn't think it was gonna be that great because he's technically somewhat sober now is Mac Miller's album he dropped this year, The Divine Feminine, which was honestly a pretty a pretty decent follow-up to what he dropped up dropped last year, which was Good AM. And it was for for Mac Miller and talking about like how you guys, how you guys just talked about you didn't think that person could have a different sound. I didn't think Mac Miller could have a different sound other than chill chill rap and then him just like honestly just sounding like kind of like really fucked up while he raps Mm -hmm. and with the divine feminine it's weirdly like funky for for a rapper and i like that i like that whole feel of that whole album like the like that one song i showed you when we went yeah from what you've showed me from this album i like no yeah you know me i'm not a mac miller fan no yeah dude because it's just like it's weirdly funky and i don't even i don't know i mean it's cool that he did it but I mean, maybe this is what he, maybe this is his sound from now on. Maybe I mean, I, I like when each album is like, man, that's this type, like the Cure. Like I really can't pinpoint two albums of the Cure that sound the same. Okay, and that could be a good reason and a bad reason. Yeah, um, you know, definitely a bad reason for their previous albums or their newest releases. But like back in the day, <laughs> no, but it was cool back in the day. You're like, dude, like I wonder, like the top, like yeah. dude, it's this weird, like. I don't fucking know, dude. Like, if they took, like, Jamaican sounds and, like, <laughs> like made them more fucked up sounding. Let's get real Irie, man. But, like, I don't know, dude. It's really weird. It's, like, almost like a Jim Henson, like, like labyrinth, but, like, more on drugs kind of thing. <laughs> and then you listen to, like, the Disintegration, which is, like, the main album that yeah. I, I always try to get everybody hooked on. And it's, like, this, like, amazing, like, like, gothic uh jam rock that is just it's dreamy yeah you all it really feels like you're in a dream um when you listen to that that album but then you go to like head on the door which is like mid 80s and it's this like just really catchy like 80s guitar sound and band it's it, it's not as jam rocky and there's, there's not long songs almost every song is like a three minute you know pop song Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just cool to see like yeah, I, I like it when bands do that or yeah. artists themselves it's like uh, the weekend like trilogy with had its own sound and then kissing i was like all right let's just fucking do something completely different and then uh beauty behind the madness was like hey guys i can actually do a pop record it's like and it's really fucking good no and yeah then, ki- like what i wanted not not kiss land but uh beauty behind the madness honestly just seemed like he was perfecting what he was trying to do with like the trilogy yeah I think it's 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 that it's hey look how much how how refined my technique has become since yeah. since the trilogy, but I also think it was a statement on hey guys everybody who makes pop music I can do it too and look how amazing I can do it because I mean like true, dude can't, true, feel, true. can't feel my face could have been a fucking like that could have been a hit by uh, 
Michael Jackson, it would probably be in his top ten. Yeah. Like, that good. Um, I love it when artists are like that, so. Hopefully, I need to listen to that album a little bit more, Mac Miller's. Oh, The Divine Feminine? Yeah. Dude, he only showed me a couple songs, and I was like, I dig this. Did I ever show you the one with Kendrick? I think that's the first one you showed me. Oh, okay. Dude, the one with Kendrick is still, like, dude. Because I, I love Kendrick. Of that. Yeah. I like Kendrick a lot. Um, I mean, not as much as it, probably most people, but because I'm not a big, not huge on rap, but. No, yeah. <sighs> it's good. It's good. How about you, Greg? What's your, uh, would this be your second to last? Yeah. Yes. My fourth pick. Uh, I'm going to go with a metalcore band from Los Angeles, California called Silent Planet. They released an album called Everything Was Sound. Amazing. <sighs> this yeah. record. Like, I know you always talk about it with me, man. You're just Jesus. Like, this I'm... band, like, everything they're doing for the metalcore genre at this moment in time is just changing everything. Yep, they're changing like, the entire it. landscape. Especially with me- metalcore needs it, man. Like, like in the music and in the lyrical content and just yep. in the way the band carries themselves everything but as far as the record goes um it's a concept record um and it tackles a lot of real issues things from mental disorders to uh social issues um but uh i guess what the band like strives to do is just kind of uh use like real references to things and kind of incorporate that into lyrics as well as just like poetic Mm -hmm. references as well and then they kind of just take a spin on it that hits you like where it's really relatable Mm -hmm. where you know somebody that's kind of gone through something like that or uh you personally have gone through something like that yeah they seem like they seem like a more personal like take of like what law dispute did in their prime mm -hmm. um a lot of speech a little bit more on the conceptual side of, like, uh, not conceptual, but, like, fictional. He likes telling stories. Yeah, more story um, yeah. You know, like, King Park is this, it's its own story, and it's, but it's like, damn, by the end of it, you're like, fuck. Like, it really just makes you think. It really makes you feel, but you don't, like, you don't know how it, that feels, or at least most people are listening to it, so I guess that's where Silent Planet and, like, a lot of speech and their prime differ. Mm-hmm. But uh no, like Silent Planet reminds me of Law Dispute mixed with O Sleeper. Because mm-hmm. O Sleeper's very conceptual. Yeah. Um I mean like I think every single album they've made is an actual concept record. Yeah. Um Um they had Sun of the Morning and then actually Child of uh, Children of Fire is actually um the next chapter of that actual of, that, the, yeah, of the concept. same concept. Right. Um I don't know if Silent Planet does that or how far they really go with their concept. Um, concept albums. I don't know if it's trying to tell one cohesive story. No, it's not really so much a story, but it's more of just like, uh, like be a theme. It's like an encompassing yes. theme. Yeah, it's like Pink so, Floyd. Really. Yeah, with like their first record they put out, it just there was kind of just different relatable things like that. Yep. But this one, I think, is more focused on like mental states of people. Yeah, and dealing with things from like depression to suicide to like, I don't know, dealing with, um trying to like love people around you versus like hating people yep. hating this is yourself. this is why i love like, metal music and a lot of people don't get it is like there definitely are metal bands that i've listened to that i listen to now and then i listen to back in the day that probably didn't have that much meaning but there's probably rap music that you listen to or something like that that is like you're just listening to it because it's a good beat mm-hmm. and it's fun. shout out travis scott one time yes <laughs> that's what i'm saying but then there's also rappers that you listen to you're like man dude i listen to this dude because he talks he spits truth Mm-hmm. He talks about like shit. You're like, fuck. I don't even know how you shout talk. out Travis Scott. One time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I feel like that's what metal is like too. Is like, and metal, and a lot of people just look at the the meaningless metal, right? And think that's just metal. Mm-hmm. And in general, the one that everybody just wants to classify as screamo. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, it makes much. me fucking cringe. And they're like, oh, you look, I listen to screamo, and I'm like, no, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> um, um, no, but like Tesseract, dude. I mean, like that's a whole concept record of like. Um, a lot of shit. Mm. Um, it's a little bit more. Uh, you have to dig. You got to dig a little deeper into it to figure out what the meaning is. Is right. uh, but I mean like, Dead Wars Prada tackles a lot of issues. Yeah. After what was it? It would have been with Roots Above. Was their like last like super Christian like yeah. you know? Because they started out as like just being a prophetic metal like christian metal band right and then what was it dead throne was their first record they really started tackling things outside of just christian 
like they talk about Christianity here and there mm-hmm. because that's something that is part of their lives. Yeah, Silent Plan is the same way. Yeah, but, but they like, never come off preachy because it's yes. it's often it's often very much symbolism. Yeah, and a lot of like different references to like different O-Sleeper. things and like honestly sometimes the lyrics don't just like immediately hit with you like you have to kind of research a little bit yeah. or like oh dude dive like like oh sleeper sun in the morning like the first track on sun in the morning is the same song uh same title but the the actual verses themselves are actually um they're actually yeah the verses are the devil speaking and he's like talking about how like he's gonna de- destroy god and all that type of stuff mm-hmm. and then the course is just one repeated line it was like it's God speaking. It's his one one thing he's saying back to to the devil, mm-hmm. and like you kind of have to deep. You have to dig mm-hmm. and like watch interviews and stuff like that to figure that out. But once you start getting that, like what the actual album is, you're able to unravel other things about him. And you're like, oh my god, right. man! Like the concepts and like the themes that this album is tackling. And I bet you, Silent Planet's the same way. Yep. You're like, and you feel rewarded when you finally dig in there. And maybe it's not the right thing maybe it's something but it's something that relates to you and that's what i love about music is like one one song could be very um especially with like this type of music um it could mean one thing to you but mean something completely different to me and that's yep. okay yeah definitely and with um, all that depth like in the lyrics um if you're just looking at the music itself like if you're into heavy music at all yeah it's definitely a record that you're going to enjoy because i think what silent planet does best is they blend emotion yeah with their heavy like metal influences yeah. of the of the music and like what you get is a really heavy record but at the same time one that punches you in the gut yeah i know i love metal because it also deals with anger as well and not a lot of music deals with anger yeah and it's like you like anger is the emotion that you feel and it's okay to be angry sometimes you know like a lot of songs are like it's okay to cry sometimes it's okay to be angry man and turn some music on and like embrace that feeling you know instead of trying to um instead of trying to just put it back into your you know just hiding it away from everybody because that's not going to help anybody yep. especially you but uh we're speaking the prophetic truth over here <laughs> let me let me talk about something that's a little little less serious but uh still on the heavy side periphery dropped a new album periphery three select difficulty um if you know me i'm a huge periphery fan I fucking love Periphery. It's basically Periphery and Tesseract. I listened to a lot of metal music back in the day, but it's definitely it's definitely become just a few bands that I listen to here and there. And there might be an album or two that sneaks its way in there that's not part of those those core bands. And uh, but Periphery is definitely one of the standouts for me. And their new album, Periphery Three, it, it's it's not as good as Periphery Two, which I think is their best album of all time. Um, and it kind of is on par with uh, their last album or a double album, the Juggernaut uh, Alpha and Omega um, albums. They're um, they're all really good. Um, I hope they go back to their to the sound that they were trying they're um, starting to create with Periphery Two, but this is still a good standout. It still stands out better than almost every other metal band that's out there nowadays, and that's definitely saying something. Yep. Um, they're implementing a lot more catchier parts, a lot more um, progressive parts. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going for a more natural sound this on this album as opposed to like Periphery Two. I don't know if you really listen to Periphery, Greg, but um, a lot more like how Contortionist did with uh, their album language, where it's a lot more natural and it's not as like synthy sounding and it's not as produced. like produced. Uh, yes, produced. That's yeah. yeah. Um, which I think is a really I wasn't expecting that from Periphery because they're always very they're very studio. They're very like yeah yeah like look at all the fucking pedals and Just stuff. Trying to make yeah. everything sound like as good as possible yes and uh it's still as good as possible but it also has a more just natural tone i guess you'd say mm-hmm. and it's it's a walk it's 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 uh has a warmth to the record that the other ones don't because of that um some standouts flatline's really good um absalom catch fire is absolutely amazing it's catchy um lune uh lune it's like a it's their last track on the um record and it's actually um oh, I don't know. There's no screaming in it at all, and it's just this very beautiful, beautiful song. And it's definitely, um, it's definitely, I think, the best ending of a record that they've had. Um, it might, it might, it, it might be fighting a little bit with, um, with a, uh, 
Juggernaut Omega with Stranger. Uh, that's pretty funny. The last the last track is called Stranger Things. Um, but it's a really good album. I I wish it was I wish it was like I said a little bit more like Periphery Two, but I mean you can't always get what you want. Fans say not heavy enough. It's not that it's not <laughs> heavy. I like the t- I like the technicality of of yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. And um, I just think it works really well with um, with the vocals and the music itself. I mm-hmm. think there's just a perfect blend of everything in Periphery Two that uh, yeah. everything else that they've made hasn't had that cohesiveness. So. So I'm saying there's a couple songs on P- Periphery Three that I'm like, eh, I could have gone, I I could have done without that that song. Yeah. So. You got one more. You got one more, Luther. What is it? Shouts out to the homie Q on this one, because I didn't even know about this guy, but this also goes back to my number one, which was Kendrick Lamar. Well, Kendrick Lamar is part of a label group called Top Dog Entertainment, and another one of his. <laughs> <laughs> another one We're of his, gonna ignore that. <laughs> another one of his label mates <laughs> dropped an album that supposedly to everybody who's fans of this guy was highly anticipated because he's supposed this is like his first album ever and he's been like pretty much like bullshitting about it for a while. And this one goes out to Isaiah Rashad's album, The Sun's Tirade. Really chill album and definitely something i'd expect out of somebody to come out of kendrick's like label but something i'm so glad q told me about because this could honestly just flew under the radar because like it's definitely like has that indie vibe to it Mm -hmm. but it's a i like all the songs are pretty legit on that album what type of you said it's chill what type of dude it's it's literally like for instance just to give you an example like my favorite song on that album is called park and he has a music video for that album Mm -hmm. and literally all it is is him in the back of a car just rapping it doesn't tell me much about the sound but it tells me how he is no yeah yeah, like it's just no like i'm yeah i can see what you say i'll listen no but yeah he's just he's literally in the back of the car and he's like rap he's like the only one who like moves at normal speed he's rapping but then when it goes to like the driver or the passenger chick, it's all like slow motion. Okay, that's dope. No, that's yeah. Dope. And then another thing too that's cool is it goes back to like what you were talking about, like meeting. There is one. Um, there's another song on there, and I didn't even get this from the song, but he shows it out in the video. I want to say it either. It's either talking about people's like net worth, mm-hmm. or like how, or like like honestly, how much how much they're really worth. And he like he walks around right, and all it says is like I think it's like a dollar or five dollars. He buys something throughout the video, so it goes down to zero. And then you see like a whole bunch of other people walking around. Some people like there's like I think there's like this one girl who's like really dressed up real nice, but yet hers is like negative something. Mm-hmm. And then there's other people who who like you wouldn't even expect, and they have like a whole bunch of money. No, yeah, it's it. I, I think for like I said, this that was definitely like a surprise like album, album that I didn't even it, didn't even know it was a thing because like. I don't. I honestly didn't know about Isaiah Rashad until this album. Well, that's gonna be my pick. It's something very similar to that. But uh, how about you, Greg? What's your last album? Uh, I'm gonna put another comeback album on this okay. list. Radiohead's oh. "A Moon Shaped Pool." Ooh, shit! That album's good. Man. Oh man, talk about like. And I, I thought Radiohead lost it, man. What was it? No, the, yeah. Was it the King of? What was uh, it King called? of Limbs. The King of Limbs. Yeah. Man, I did not like that at no, all. Yeah. I was like, this is. Like Radiohead's weird. Like Radiohead, oh, yeah, but, yeah. but Radiohead's been known They're to be weird. Extremely decide like divisive band. Like yes. people either love, love this them. band and think they're like the best band in the world, or they like yes. think they're just really good. And then other people love to hate on this band, yeah. thinking they're just like total shit. See, my friend Chris <laughs> brought up uh, a, a a thing I didn't even know about. Um, you either most people there's a thing on the internet. It's like you either love Muse or you love Radiohead. And there's, <laughs> you can't love both. That's and I was true. like, really? Like, there's no, a there's, there's like an internet feud between not them, but the internet itself, like people. Really? There's a feud between like uh, Muse fans and Radiohead band, Radiohead fans. I'm like, I mean, I could see where like like Muse definitely w- was inspired by Radiohead, but they've definitely become themselves, like their own sound. Mm-hmm. I think in the past couple of years, but I, I still like Absolution by Muse the most. But sure. Radiohead, yeah, Radiohead. I, I was like, man, these guys are losing it. But yeah, keep going. Tell tell them, tell them about this amazing record. Tell actually. them about it. Um, I mean, I consider In Rainbows to be Radiohead's best record. Oof, a nope. lot of people don't consider that to be their best record, but I do. Um, 
Okay. So computer. for me, this is like a return to form to like that sound that they had back. Yeah. Like what? Ten years ago. Maybe. Was In Rainbows ten years ago? I want to say it was like two thousand seven. So maybe like less. Around than ten years. That, near almost decade. ten years. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a moonshade pool is mostly just a piano and s- string kind of record. It's yep. really just a wasn't expecting it. Cinematic. Um, pretty like just orchestra, um, oftentimes a little depressing, a little sad, but really, really pretty and like gorgeous vocal. It's music. like they're epic. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like it feels like they're epic. Like, I and mean, that's really the only way I can describe it is it's just like, it's not an album you go, dude, listen to this one song. It's like, no, you gotta listen. Like, you have to be kind of in the right mood for it. Yes. I you mean, have to be in the right mood. Not necessarily like depressed, yes. but like. I don't listen to something it's chill. It's not like, like it's chill. It's not gonna pump you up or like yeah, yeah it's something you're gonna put on. To um, but it's definitely this thing. You don't put it on shuffle. You don't listen to one song. No. You listen to it from the beginning to the end. It's one my of those favorite records. kind of albums. Yep, those are my favorites. <laughs> a true um, album. Honestly, you can't really be an album if you just have to like Bunch shuffle through the songs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. Devin loves shuffling stuff. She's like, I don't want to know what's next. I'm like, no, I love knowing what's next. <laughs> yeah. Like that's. That's what makes like a good, and then you're listening to it the way the artist wants you to listen to it. Yep. You know, Dude, um, that is that is one thing too that I have to say that kind of sucks, being me who primarily listens to rap. But when it does happen, when like one song transitions to the next song so smoothly that even in that little second where it's like switching songs, you didn't even notice it switched songs. Yeah, and a lot of my music, a lot of metal does that. A lot no, of see, that's what I'm that. saying. Because because all the stuff you showed me, like they literally switch. Test like, No, yeah, because they have they have like, a four piece like of matter, uh, or of mind, of matter, of energy. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, their album is I think four pieces. I'm missing one. Hold on. No, because I remember you were showing me it one time, and then you were like, "Dude, what do you think about this song?" And I was like, "Bro, I already told you I like the song." Yeah, and altered like, state of this matter. Is a different song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the album's called Altered State, and then it's called. Of matter, of mind, of reality, and of, uh, rea- of, uh, yeah, of reality, of energy. My bad. Something's like screwed up on the, on here. Like of re- like there's a song that's like, number eight is behind ten. I don't know why, but, um, Weird. no, like every single piece, every part blends together. Mm-hmm. So like, the first so- three songs blend together. And you're like, man, this is fucking amazing. <laughs> um. And it, and it blends so perfectly. Blends so perfectly. When you get something that blends like that, you're like, holy shit. That Crazy. is just where it's at. Like, And it gets you pumped. It gets you pumped for this like movement. Instead of... instead of, um, and, and Tesseract, I think, does it best. Is like, it is a movement. You don't listen to just one of those songs in that piece. Like, you listen to the whole piece because like, it really does feel like one, one whole song. And it's very much like classical music, which I've, I've grown to learn. Is like, you have pieces... But you have mul- and and but most of them have multiple parts to them, mm-hmm. and um, they all blend together very very well, and that's what that's what Tesseract was able to do with this one. Yeah, um, but I think this Radiohead re- record is pretty minimal for the band. Um, yes, very. It's not it's, it's not, not difficult. like a rock record like their previous records. Um, like I said, it's mainly just piano and strings and then vocals, but. The way it's arranged, you can tell it's that beautiful. it's the whole band like putting in effort to yeah. create like a whole piece. So it's one of those like you you think it's simple like, but it's just a lot of right. things, delicate like very delicate playing, mm-hmm. and because it's so delicate, it sounds simple. But then you really like dig into it, and you're like, there's a lot going on right no, now yeah, in this sure. like one little piece. Yeah, um, you start to appreciate it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I definitely appreciated this album. Uh, well, in their last one, yeah, um, just for the how cohesive and uh, beautiful it was, how how it was arranged. Yep, that's why like the arrangement in was a King of Limbs was just atrocious to me. <laughs> like it just didn't have any like, I don't know. It, it's like right now I'm in, I'm in, I'm learning about like art cinema right now in college right now, and there's just, there's just some things I'm just like, I just feel like you're just being weird to be weird right now. Right. It's like abstract painting and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I'm like I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you know. Like, I want it to be weird. I like weird stuff, but, I mean, like, I like something that's a little cohesive as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, my last album is actually my favorite album for this year, and it would have never happened if it weren't for the best damn show that came out this year, too, Stranger <laughs> Things. So, um, Survive, that's the band. 
they just released at the end of September their new album RR seven three four nine. And if you're wondering why they have such weird albums, what was that? It's just their ca- it's it's the catalog it's the catalog number for the album. That's how they make their album names. Because like relapse oh, record, yeah, yeah. it's relapse it's, it's relapse yeah, record. It's relapse yeah. record. That's the RR. And then seven three four nine is the, the number catalog you number. See on the side of the record. Yeah. That's so like, the yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, this album it's their first time, and, re- and it's very funny because Relapse Records is is actually uh, dominantly a metal uh, record company. Yep. But they picked uh, they picked these guys up, and it's electronic music. And I've and if you if you know me for the past couple of months, um, I've dived very deep in some like uh, I guess you'd call synth wave. It's just like retro, like eighty sounding um, um, synth wave music. Oh, that's your background. Dude, it's such a good album art too, isn't the it? The album art's fantastic. I fucking love it. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite uh, album arts that's come out in the past couple years. Um, but I mean, like, dude, this album is just fucking phenomenal. I just saw them uh, last week uh, live, and they, they, they were just amazing. They were absolutely amazing. Um, and they, they're so. The, and on top of that, they're also just a, a four man analog synth band. Mm-hmm. Everything you're hearing. They're turning these knobs. They're turning like playing these keys and then like making it on the fly, like making it sound like that on the fly, um, with actual instruments. And I think there's I I don't know like I'm not sitting here like dogging. It sounds like I'm dogging on like like EDM music that everything's like electronic. But I think there is something Press about play. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bruh, that's the, that's my main reason why I love going to EDM shows is just watching this. Watch it, watching this guy on stage clapping his hands. No, not even clap. No, see, that's what I was gonna say. Like at first, like it looks like they're just pressing play. No, like, there's definitely stuff. Going no, yeah, on. like they'll, they'll press play, like and then they'll start getting the crowd all hype and stuff, and you're like, oh, they're just playing a track. And then they have to focus on the track, and you just see this dude like looking at the looking at his like set, like uh, I mean, like he's like, I don't know what you call like his mix board, and he's just like going in, and you're just like, see, Fuck. I just appreciate, like. What's the best way to do it? Instead of tweaking a song, like they're creating the song, they're creating it. Like if they just stopped playing, nothing would be there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like that's what I like. Um, and there's definitely a sound to that analog that you just don't get with with a, a electric, elect- like yeah, a computer digital electronic band. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially like when you go see them live, preset or sound or something. Yeah. Like, so they have the like software. you know like a Korg and a a, a was it ARP Odyssey? I might be butchering these names but it's like you know synth boards from the fucking like 70s and 80s and you know like late 60s and uh it's really cool man it's really cool and the songs are they're very weird um if you like like 80s like horror soundtracks they're not as but it's like the dark and ominous tones you get yep um definitely dark definitely ambient at times definitely yes very like, like low synth. like like fog like definitely low fog. horror influence too yes very um um they're not as horror themed as most bands in this like mm-hmm. uh category they're yeah. very a lot of bands just sound like they're like an 80 soundtrack but they definitely are like hey we like definitely love this sound but we're gonna do our own Some thing little, with it and that's why goth I f- love there. yes a lot of goth love that's why my, <laughs> that's why i went with my dad because he's such a big like he loved like nine inch nails and stuff like yeah. that um but like standouts man like high rise and copter mm-hmm. those songs are fucking amazing high rise takes more of like a sci-fi feel to it yes copter and then ha- copter has this like total like 180 part yeah. that i'm just like it gives me goosebumps i mm-hmm. fucking love it um but the whole album is good i honestly don't it's it's nine tracks 40 it's 41 minutes and i don't think one minute of that album is bad at all no um yeah, i know i know awesome. there's a couple songs um the middle for you that is a little bit forgettable but uh, for me, I don't think there's one song in this album. I just think I, they're okay. I don't think they're like throwaway tracks at all. I just think they're they're all right compared to everything else, kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's my favorite album this year Fantastic. by far. I think it 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 just obliterates everything. It's my, my Halloween opinion. soundtrack. So yeah, it's a fantastic. Like <laughs> I literally even just my put dad, it on during even the party. my dad. Like, <laughs> like after we, was like, we all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Gabe was getting really into it. By the way, they're cool, dude. Gabe they're was really like, cool. Dude, what is this? And he was like vibing to it. He's like, yeah, I like this. Yeah, <laughs> it's dope. It's it's and it's awesome music to um just like turn your mind off, focus on the road, and just embrace this like amazing music, mm-hmm. especially during the night, like a nice night drive, man. It's it's definitely. It's definitely one of my favorite albums of all time. Like if we had to do a redo on our top five albums, it might it might uh, Dang. bump something off of it. Dang. It's that good. High praise. High praise. Yeah. The, if if you like electronic music, it's a, it's an absolute must listen. It's definitely different than any uh, 
the most electronic music that you probably listen to, but um. Is that who's that? Is that, is that, is that crazy that, frog? Yeah, it's crazy frog. Oh, fuck that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that bullshit. All right, well I'm done. That's <laughs> that's all I got. Also, crazy frog. I got one album. One album I just listened to today. I don't. It, I'm very much in the early phases of it because I haven't one. I one. I haven't finished it in two. I'm just on my first impressions. But uh, Weevil or Wevel. I don't know. It's W E V A L. Um, they just it's an electronic duo. Just started listening to them today. Uh, their new debut album is phenomenal. It's abstract, like electronic music, music as well. It's a little bit more modern. It's like if they if you took modern electronic music and um, tweaked it a little bit. It's like abstract art. Cool. Um, definitely a listen. It's really good. I think you'd like it. Um, Luther might like it. Um, but I'm too early on on it to give any other impressions. But it's definitely something to look out. Um. I was like three tracks and I was like, damn, this is really fucking good. And I was like, and then that's the main reason why I wanted to, listen, I wanted to talk about music today. So Cool. But anyway, Luther, tell, uh, tell them bitches where they can find us. All right. This was episode 12 of the Nerd Outlet podcast. You guys can find us on Instagram at Nerd Outlet, on Twitter at Nerd Outlet, uh, on Facebook slash Nerd Outlet, and of course, on the YouTubes. Doos, 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 yeah, just doos. search Nerd Outlet. We don't have the channel thing yet. Nope. And people, please keep nerding out. Yeah. Subscribe, please. Share with your friends. We'll see you next week.